2008 was the greatest thing most people would say, I think, in the history of the African-American presence in this country, the election of Barack Hussein Obama. I still remember, I still remember crying. I didn't believe it. I did not let myself believe it, Mr. Chairman, until Wolf Blitzer called it. Because <laughs> I knew something terrible was gonna happen on the way to the ballot box, but it, but it didn't. And then he was reelected. And then, remember when he was elected, all those kind of bizarre declarations, we had suddenly stepped into another zone called post-racial America. And I remember being exhilarated, but I went like, hold on, hold on a minute, y'all. Things are getting out of control. Y'all losing your mind. Post-racial, all that history is suddenly washed away because Barack was elected? I don't think so, and it turned out that was not the case. And in fact, as recently as July, 69% of the American people believe that race relations are generally bad. And six out of 10, 60% of the people surveyed said that race relations are growing worse, up from 38% a year ago. That's terrible, ladies and gentlemen. I heard a commentator the other day, and Roger Cohen wrote about this in the Times in June, who implied that and one of the ironic legacies of the dissent, the, um, the bitter anger, the seething resentment over the fact that a black man was elected mm -hmm. not once but twice to fill the greatest office in the land. Mm -hmm. One of the ironic impl implications could be the election of Donald Trump as president of the United States. These are just some of the ironies and complexities of race in America today that I wanted to throw out on the table as we gather here in Mr. Jefferson's Monticello and contemplate the implications of slavery and race and the struggle for equality in our great republic.